Hey everyone, in my last page of the video I talked about Keep on the Shadowfell, the very first product for Dungeons and Dragons 4th Edition. Today I want to talk about the very last official product for D&D 4th Edition, Menzo Berenzon, City of Intrigue. While this was the last official product to use the D&D 4th Edition trade dress, it was not technically a 4th Edition product. It was released in August of 2012, several months after Wizards had announced that 4th Edition would be ending and replaced by D&D Next. Not wanting to release a product for a brand that they had just ended, this book was stripped of any mechanics that would tie it to 4th edition. In fact, the back cover of the book and the introduction both include text indicating that this can be used with any edition of D&D. If you're interested in helping out the channel by getting a PDF or a softcover reprint of this book, I will put an affiliate link down in the description. But let's take a look inside. The book is 127 pages long, and it is split into six chapters, Campaign of Intrigue, The Way of Lolth, Drow Factions, City of Spiders, The North Dark, Be a Drow. The hardcover also includes a full poster map of the location. In the introduction, we get an overview of the core elements of this setting. This is one of the things I like about this book, with all the different settings that are out there, like Eberron and Dragonlance and Greyhawk. It can be hard for players, especially new players, to understand what is actually different about them without reading through a lot of those books or playing through several campaigns. Here we actually get a nice breakdown of what specific things set this setting apart from the others. It then summarizes each of the chapters, and you can see that the bulk of the book is for the Dungeon Master, with really just the last chapter containing some player content. With Forgotten Realms and Eberron each having campaign guides for 4th edition plus player guides for 4th edition, I expect that that was the original intent here as well, but once they made the decision to make this system neutral, they needed to get rid of the player guide. It wouldn't have been much of a player guide if it didn't have any mechanics for the races and classes or any additional powers and things like that. Chapter 1 covers how to design an adventure for this city. There are several types of campaign themes given as starting points. This city is one that is built on evil and corruption and pursuing one's own self-interest. These pages give a few good sparks that you could use to inspire your campaigns. And then the next four pages give a timeline of events in the city, mostly over the last few hundred years. We get some history on the wars and other critical events, as well as some introductions to the famous drow Drizzt and some background on Lolth, which will be expanded on in the next chapter. It also highlights that you don't need to set your adventure in the present. You are free to use a time period that interests you and you can build your campaign there. Schemes in the Shadows highlights how this setting is about the tangled web of power. Very little happens here without a ripple affecting somebody else's plans. And these connections are what can make for really interesting campaigns. But with all the different threads that could come into play, it would make it more complicated for dungeon masters and players in order to keep everything interesting and on track. As with a lot of 4th edition material, there is a page dedicated to helping you stray away from the narrative. It presents a series of what-if questions that you can use to alter the timeline in a way that better suits your campaign. Uh, it is another example of how 4th edition was really focused on providing tools to help the dungeon masters create games for their table rather than locking you into a specific set of lore. The second chapter of the book covers the culture in the city. What is life like for the drow that live there? First, we get an introduction to Lolth, the demon queen of spiders, mistress of lies, lady of shadows. She is an authoritarian goddess that demands absolute loyalty, and she manipulates her followers to achieve her own ends. This section also mentions the importance of spiders to the drow, something that shouldn't be ignored by the adventures and could play a role in your campaigns. We then get a little hint of the justice system of the drow and a peek at a few of the other gods that some of the drow might be worshipping. The next pages talk about the drow themselves, how they behave, their goals, their flaws, the structure of their society. It is a matriarchy with the eight strongest houses ruling over everybody. Which house you belong to heavily influences your role in the society. It then goes into detail about a number of specific areas of culture, such as commerce, festivals, languages, and even lists a number of proverbs that are used by the drow. This is a detail that I think is really interesting and would be a cool part of a campaign. You could use some of these as a passphrase to get into some location, or maybe as a clue to a puzzle that the party is trying to solve. Nothing screams potential for intrigue more than factions, and boy does Menzo Berenzon have factions. Chapter 3 grows into great detail with everything you need to make factions a key part of your campaign. As I mentioned, the eight strongest houses are the ruling class and preside over everything. 
but it is the factions that manage what happens in the city every single day. Everything in the setting revolves around power, seeking it, gaining it, holding it. This chapter has some stuff that would fall into the category of mechanics, but nothing here is specific to fourth edition. It's all about tools to help you rank the assorted houses and factions. There's a nice table on page 31 that shows you the 20 most powerful houses and how their power has changed over the years. And then there are some good descriptions of all the components that make up a house and a faction, power, membership, religion, goals. But you're not stuck with what is provided. There is a set of tables to help you create your own factions. And this is the sort of thing I would expect from a 4th edition book. And I'm glad I found it in here as well, even though they did strip out a lot of the true 4th edition stuff. Then we get into the descriptions of each of the most powerful houses and factions in the city. You get the key members of the organization, details on what they do and how they operate, a look at their insignia. And using the information from the tables in the previous section for building a faction, you can see how powerful each of these houses are. It's really just a tremendous amount of information for each of these ruling, ruling powers in the city. Only the top six houses are described in great detail. The next four have just the core information, but not a full set of lore to go with it. But you do still get the insignia for each, as well as the, uh, the icons to indicate their level of power in the city. Then, just as with the houses, the eight most powerful factions are described in great detail. There's plenty of information here to build an incredible campaign using these factions and houses vying for power. Just putting an adventuring party in a single faction and giving them the goal to move up to a ruling power in the city would probably be enough of a seed for a really fun gaming campaign. Next, we dive into details of the city itself. First, it covers the natural features such as the Isle of Roth, the Cistern, and the assorted rifts that are covered in the, in the city. The section on city life can help while role-playing the party walking around the town and seeing how outsiders are viewed by others. The section on districts brings another sort of mechanic to the book. Here there are icons to represent the price, quality, and threat level of different locations in the city. Each district has some flavor to it, and then locations within those districts where the DMs can use those icons to inform decisions on what happens. For example, they could go into a tavern. The icons will indicate how much it will cost, how good the food is, and how likely it is that they will encounter a problem while they're in there. It's an interesting approach that really helps the dungeon master, and I wish it's something had carried over into 5th edition. There are a ton of locations given, so there's lots of opportunities for the party to have all kinds of encounters. I like how each district has a small block with some common names and what you might find there. Really good for a quick reference. Beyond the city proper is an area known as the Dark Dominion. This is a labyrinth of tunnels that hold even more dangers to the party. It's a great place for secret meetings and other nefarious activities. Chapter 5 covers the North Dark. This is the larger area of Faroon that includes Menzo Berenzon. The North Dark consists of a number of different Underdark areas, each with their own characteristics. The chapter provides a brief introduction to each of them, just in case your party's adventures are not contained to the City of Intrigue. And then we get to the last chapter, Be a Drow. This very much looks like something that they had larger plans for, but once they needed to make this book system neutral, it lost most of its content. Some of the stuff here looks like a starting point for something that never really materialized. First, there's a sort of ad for a drow treachery deck. Then we get into some interesting few pages about how to play a drow. It's a little bit on choosing a house, and then some nice detail about how your character's worth would change based on decisions that they made and events that they took part in. Everything that happens to that character would raise or lower their worth, giving them a different position within their house. It's really an interesting mechanic, and I think if there was a full player's guide, we would have seen a lot more of this, perhaps with some of this translating into additional powers that could be unlocked. We then get into some guidance about how to roleplay a drow. And finally, a key for the poster maps that is included with the hardcover. I think my feeling on this is what might have been. It had the misfortune of coming at the very end of 4th edition's life cycle, so it had to get stripped down to just the essentials. Even without any meaningful mechanics, it has a ton of really good information to help build a campaign in Menzo Berenzon. If you're a DM that wants to create a campaign filled with intrigue and a tangled web of conflicting priorities and a struggle for power, then I think this book will still be usable for you in any setting or any edition of Dungeons & Dragons.
It's a solid campaign guide. The lack of fourth edition mechanics means that it's still usable today. It can stand on its own, and I think it's a really good book. Do you have this book? Did I miss anything here that you like about it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you want perks like early access to videos, please click that join button to become a channel member. Until next time, take care.